Since my latest animated video is taking longer than expected, I decided that today I'm going to review a new model that I'd recently got. This is a Bachmann Class 03 in Ministry of Defense Green. Number 03144, the Western Wagoner. British diesels just have strange names, don't they? Anyways, this is an 060 diesel mechanical. That's six coupled driving wheels. An EYC classification, that would be a C, because there are coupling rods connecting the wheels together. Or an AAR, that would also be a C, because uh, AAR doesn't care about the side rods. As you can see, the model is very, very well detailed with lots of small handrails. It's actually quite tricky to pick up. Um, I would suggest picking it up by the side frame, because as you can see, all the way down the engine cover, there's lots of little handrails and... Listen closely! Here's a little lesson in history! The British Railway's Class 03 was a development of the earlier Class 04, which was built by the Drury Car Company. While the original Class 04s were constructed mainly by the Vulcan Foundry, these were fa made at either the Swindon Works, as in the case with mine, or at the Doncaster Works, depending on which region they worked on. These locomotives were powered by fairly small Gardner engines that gave them a top speed of around 15 miles an hour. Yeah, not particularly fast, but for diesel shunters, that's alright. As shunters go, they were very lightweight and were used on many lines that could not support the weight of a Class 08. A slight problem this presented was the fact that on certain signal indicator boards, they didn't actually show up because they didn't weigh enough. Now for a signalman, it's really important to know where all your trains are, so because of that, many of them were coupled to match wagons. The locomotives were originally outshopped in British Railways Black, like this one. And since mine is currently in Ministry of Defense Green, I'm actually thinking of repainting it into either British Railways Green or this British Railways Black livery. Now being shunting locomotives, and more importantly diesel mechanical, they had no multiple unit connection. Now let's start the review of the model, starting, of course, with the business end of the locomotive, the grill end. I'm not going to say front because it's a diesel, you can, it's debatable. Anyways, we have a lot of warnings for electric overheads, more towards the sides. We've got a very nice wasp stripe livery. We've got the exhaust chimney, some various little handrails, a very nice mesh grill, oval buffers, a screw coupling, well, part of a screw coupling, and a vacuum pipe that I did not have to fit. To those of you who are curious, the buffers are in fact sprung. Here we have the driver's side of the locomotive. As you can see, we have the six wheels there, we're not missing any. We got the side rods going down to the jack shaft, an air tank for the vacuum lines, some handrails, some cab steps, and more importantly, lots of little warnings for overhead lines. Here's the uh, other driver's side because there's two control stands on this locomotive, both side by side. Anyways, we got the same details on this side, just a little bit closer up for you. There's the handrails along the top, and the little bulge on the fuel tank is captured very nicely. Here's a closer look at the coupling rods and various other pieces. As you can see, there's also a vacuum tank on this side with a uh, slightly broken pipe. Now, in real life, that'd be a serious problem, but yeah, I got this used, sorry. Anyways, then here's the jack shaft here. There's the steps and a little mesh covering the jack shaft, again, in case your little people get mixed up in that. And also, very nice sanding gear. And let's have a look at the front of the cab. As you can see, there are two cab windows. See, having windows is very nice in a cab. These are glazed, and the glazing isn't too thick, but it isn't too thin, and it's not brittle or anything. There's also very, very small wiper blades on there. A very delicate little horn. I prefer the air whistles these had, but the horns are nice. There's also little fuel caps for the fuel tank. Here's the cab side. As you can see, there's the nameplate, the number, and the British Rail Tops number. There's also a cab door in here, which doesn't open, but not really bothered by it. The nameplate is very nice. I like how it's painted. It'd be nice if it was molded, but you know. Now, if I can get the camera to focus. As you can see here, there's a little builder's... Oh! There's a builder's plate, and it is actually legible if the camera will pick it up. Built Swindon, 1961. And here's the back of the cab, or front, I guess. Depending on your interpretation, there are handrails, wiper blades, tail or headlights, depending which way you're going. As well as little lamp hooks, if you're doing the um, older style of kerosene lamps. To my American audience, these things may seem very strange. Uh, I can explain. Right, so here is a diesel electric locomotive. This is an Alco build. This is a switching locomotive designed for a similar purpose. It has two sets of four wheels powered by traction motors, making it a B, B, or Bo, Bo configuration locomotive. The Class 03, Class 04s, and the 05s are set up in this sort of configuration. 
The engine runs a gearbox, much like a tractor or a bus or a car. And then that gearbox then sends its power down to the jack shaft, which goes through the rods and turns the wheels. All right, we're about to run the model. I forgot to mention this. There's actually the extra chunk of buffer beam. That's in case you're like me and you want to film this model, but you don't want to have the NEM couplings present. Well, thanks for watching. I should have some more animated videos coming up later, but for now, I think this will do. So let's click that button.